Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you are planning to go into portrait shooting with a Sony APS-C camera, the Sigma 56mm f1.4 and the Sony 85mm f1.8 are still two popular lenses for it. In today's video we will comparing these two lenses and we will find out which lens is a better option for you. First we will start with some specs, then we will do a side by side image comparison and after that we will come to the conclusion. Let's start with the focal range. The Sigma is a prime lens with a fixed focal length of 56mm which has an effective full frame equivalent focal range of 84mm when you use it on the APS-C camera. Sony is a prime lens with a fixed focal length of 85mm. When it's mounted on the APS-C camera, it provides a full frame equivalent of 127.5mm. The size of a lens is an important deciding factor when comparing two lenses. The Sony 85mm is the longer of these two lenses with 82mm. The Sigma 56mm with a length of 60mm is 22mm shorter. Besides being longer, the Sony lens has also a larger diameter of 78mm compared to the Sigma lens with 67mm. The Sigma lens has a minimum focus distance of 50cm and the Sony of 80cm. Both share the same filter thread of 67mm. The Sony lens has also a focus hold button and the Sigma lens has no button. The weight of a lens is as important as its external dimension especially if you are planning to handhold your camera and lens combination for longer periods. The Sigma weights 280 gram, which means it's 91 gram lighter than the Sony, which has a weight of 371 gram. The next part is a price. The Sigma has a price of 399 euro and the Sony costs 489 euro, which means the Sigma is 90 euro cheaper than the Sony lens. But let's come to the interesting part of this video, the side by side image comparison. Have fun! Okay, now we are here on our side by side comparison. You see here on the left side the Sigma 56mm and on the right side the Sony 85mm. I have used for both images here the aperture wide open. You see here on the Sigma 1.4 aperture and on the Sony the 1.8 aperture. And if we comparing these two images, you see the Sigma lens is a little bit warmer here than the Sony, but both looks very good on the first look. But let's zoom in. And maybe in the middle the Sigma is a little bit sharper but the Sony is also very sharp. The sharpness is more or less equal but let's go to the edges and of course here if we go to the edges the Sigma is softer here. The Sony is still sharper Oh, the difference is huge here on the edges. Let's go to the right side. Okay, on the right side, the Sony, it's also a bit soft. In the middle, both are very, very sharp. Okay, now I have put the aperture here of 7.1 to see if we can improve the sharpness a little bit on both lenses. On the first look we see directly the Sigma is a little bit sharper than before, but we see the Sony is still sharper than the Sigma. But let's zoom in. In the middle, again the same picture here, the sharpness is equal. It's Both lenses are very sharp. But let's go to the edges and as I told before the Sigma has improved here a little bit. Now the sharpness is much better than on f1.4 and we have here a huge improvement but the Sony is still sharper here. Let's go to the right side And here again, you see it here on the nail, the Sony is a little bit sharper. A much better performance from the Sigma if you close the aperture on 7.1. Okay, now you see an example from the landscape photography from the same point. And you see again, the Sigma is a little bit warmer than the Sony, but the sharpness 
on both lenses are very good. Now we come to the portrait comparison. I've captured my cat here and you see the bouquet of the Sony lens is a little bit smoother here than the bouquet on the Sigma lens. But both images looks very comparable. You see a smooth bouquet on both images and a very sharp face here from the cat. But let's zoom in. The focus was of course on the eye and you see excellent sharpness on both lenses here. Maybe the Sigma here is a little bit sharper on the left eye, but all in all, a very, very good sharpness. Excellent performance from both lenses here. But what about the bokeh balls? You see here on the first look, the Sigma, it's in the middle, a little bit rounder than the Sony lens, but on the edges, the Sony lens does job a little bit better. But let's zoom in. The sharpness again on both lenses are very good. Here the Sigma is a little bit sharper than Sony. And on the bokeh balls you see the Sigma is a bit rounder than the Sony. Let's go to the edges. And here on the edges, my point of view, the Sony bokeh balls are a little bit better than the Sigma bokeh balls. Welcome back. As you have seen, the Sony lens has a better performance than the Sigma. But the question is, what are your preferences? If it's just portraits, then both are equally good. Both lenses are very sharp in the center, but at the edges, the Sigma loses sharpness and the Sony is still sharp. However, you will using for portraits almost an open aperture, so the edges are usually out of focus and the differences is not noticeable. But if you also want to shoot landscape, the differences is of course noticeable at the edges. Nevertheless, the Sony lens is a larger and heavier than the Sigma. Everyone has to to know for themselves which compromises they want to make. My recommendation is if you want to stay with APS-C and you only do portraits then I would take the Sigma. But if you don't mind the size and weight and if you maybe want to switch to full frame in the future then I would go with the Sony. But what is your point of view about these two lenses? Feel free to write it in the comments. And if you like this test I would be happy if you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions Please write it in the comments too. I will try to answer everyone. See you next time.